Hello, my friend. Welcome to another episode of My Daily Mana. My name is Kelvin. I'm here with Pastor Franklin Nicholas, who is the founder and president of Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry. And our goal with this video series is to help strengthen and encourage your walk with God by providing a structure where we have a Bible reading plan where you can spend time with God every single day because we believe that is the most important thing you can do as a Christian is to spend time with God and to hear from God through His Word. So the way this works is we listen to the Bible together, we also read the Bible together, and then we give a brief summary of the message for the day, and we pray that you are blessed by the message. So before we take too long and too much of your time, let's dive straight in, and we'll start off with a word of prayer uh, by Pastor Franklin Nicholas. Let's bow our heads. Dear loving Father, we thank you for this very minute where we can actually listen to your words. And as you speak your word to us, we're asking to give us the strength and the courage to accept it. Then uh, there's someone who has a burden. We're asking you, please, through your grace and through your mercy, relieve that burden for them, and they will know that thou has done it. Bless us and bless this program, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so at this point in time, we strongly encourage you and we ask that you get your Bible out with you. So if you have a physical Bible or if your Bible is on a phone or electronic device, we ask that you get your Bible. Also, we'll have the Bible on the screen as well so you can follow with us and you can also listen to the Bible in audio. But we ask that you prayerfully get your Bible with you and you follow, follow along with us as we study the Word of God. So let's dive in. Today is the 27th day of June. Welcome to the Daily Audio Bible. I am Brian, and it is wonderful to be here with you today as we gather around the global campfire and find a place and get cozy and allow the scriptures to come into our lives. And we will do what we always do We'll go back to the place where we left off. That happens to be Second Kings right now. And so we're picking up the story from there. Second Kings chapter 10, verse 32 through 12, verse 21 today. <clears throat> In those days, the Lord began to reduce the size of Israel's territory. Hazael attacked their eastern border. He conquered all the land of Gilead, including the territory of Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh, extending all the way from the Arior in the Arnon Valley through Gilead to Bashan. The rest of the events of Jehu's reign, including all his accomplishments and successes, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Israel. Jehu passed away and was buried in Samaria. His son Jehoahaz replaced him as king. Jehu reigned over Israel for 28 years in Samaria. When Atalia, the mother of Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she was determined to destroy the entire royal line. So Jehosheba, the daughter of King Jehoram, the sister of Ahaziah, took Ahaziah's son Joash and stole him away from the rest of the royal descendants who were to be executed. She hid him and his nurse in the room where the bed covers were stored. So he was hidden from Italia and escaped execution. He hid out with his nurse in the Lord's temple for six years while Italia was ruling over the land. In the seventh year, Jehoiada summoned the officers of the units of hundreds of the Carrions and the royal bodyguard. He met with them in the Lord's temple. He made an agreement with them and made them swear an oath of allegiance in the Lord's temple. Then he showed them the king's son. He ordered them, This is what you must do. One third of the unit that is on duty during the Sabbath will guard the royal palace. Another third of you will be stationed at the foundation gate. Still, another third of you will be stationed at the gate behind the royal guard. You will take turns guarding the palace. The two units who are off duty on the Sabbath will guard the Lord's temple and protect the king. You must surround the king. Each of you must hold his weapon in his hand. Whoever approaches your ranks must be killed. You must accompany the king wherever he goes. 
The officers of the units of hundreds did just as Jehoiada the priest ordered. Each of them took his men, those who were on duty during the Sabbath as well as those who were off duty on the Sabbath, and reported to Jehoiada the priest. The priest gave to the officers of the units of hundreds King David's spears and the shields that were kept in the Lord's temple. The royal bodyguard took their stations, each holding his weapon in his hand. They lined up from the south side of the temple to the north side and stood near the altar in the temple, surrounding the king. Jehoiada led out the king's son and placed on him the crown and the royal insignia. They proclaimed him king and poured olive oil on his head. They clapped their hands and cried out, Long live the king! When Atalia heard the royal guard shout, she joined the crowd at the Lord's temple. Then she saw the king standing by the pillar, according to custom. The officers stood beside the king with their trumpets, and all the people of the land were celebrating and blowing trumpets. Atalia tore her clothes and screamed, Treason! Treason! Jehoiada the priest ordered the officers of the units of hundreds who were in charge of the army, bring her outside the temple to the guards, put to death by the sword anyone who follows her. The priest gave this order because he had decided she should not be executed in the Lord's temple. They seized her and took her into the precincts of the royal palace through the horse's entrance. There she was executed. Jehoiada then drew up a covenant between the Lord and the king and the people, stipulating that they should be loyal to the Lord. All the people of the land went and demolished the temple of Baal. They smashed its altars and idols to bits. They killed Mitan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altar. Jehoiada the priest then placed guards at the Lord's temple. He took the officers of the units of hundreds, the Carrions, the royal bodyguard, and all the people of the land, and together they led the king down from the Lord's temple. They entered the royal palace through the gate of the royal bodyguard, and the king sat down on the royal throne. All the people of the land celebrated, for the city had rest now that they had killed Atalia with the sword in the royal palace. Jehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. In Jehu's seventh year, Jehoash became king. He reigned for forty years in Jerusalem. His mother was Zibiah, who was from Beersheba. Jehoash did what the Lord approved all his days when Jehoiada the priest taught him. But the high places were not eliminated. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense on the high places. Jehoash said to the priests, I place at your disposal all the consecrated silver that has been brought to the Lord's temple, including the silver collected from the census tax, the silver received from those who have made vows, and all the silver that people have voluntarily contributed to the Lord's temple. The priests should receive the silver they need from the treasurers and repair any damage to the temple they discover. By the 23rd year of King Jehoash's reign, the priests had still not repaired the damage to the temple. So King Jehoash summoned Jehoiada the priest along with the other priests and said to them, Why have you not repaired the damage to the temple? Now, take no more silver from your treasurers unless you intend to use it to repair the damage. The priests agreed not to collect silver from the people and relieved themselves of personal responsibility for the temple repairs. Jehoiada the priest took a chest and drilled a hole in its lid. He placed it on the right side of the altar near the entrance of the Lord's temple. The priests who guarded the entrance would put into it all the silver brought to the Lord's temple. When they saw the chest was full of silver, the royal secretary and the high priest counted the silver that had been brought to the Lord's temple and bagged it up. They would then hand over the silver that had been weighed to the construction foreman assigned to the Lord's temple. They hired carpenters and builders to work on the Lord's temple as well as masons and stonecutters. They bought wood and chiseled stone to repair the damage to the Lord's temple and also paid for all the other expenses. The silver brought to the Lord's temple was not used for silver bowls, trimming shears, basins, trumpets, or any kind of gold or silver implements. 
It was handed over to the foreman who used it to repair the Lord's temple. They did not audit the treasurers who dispersed the funds to the foreman, for they were honest. The silver collected in conjunction with the reparation offerings and sin offerings was not brought to the Lord's temple. It belonged to the priests. At that time, King Hazael of Syria attacked Gath and captured it. Hazael then decided to attack Jerusalem. King Jehoash of Judah collected all the sacred items that his ancestors Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Ahaziah, kings of Judah, had consecrated, as well as his own sacred items and all the gold that could be found in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and the royal palace. He sent it all to King Hazael of Syria, who then withdrew from Jerusalem. The rest of the events of Joash's reign, including all his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. His servants conspired against him and murdered Joash at Beth Milo, on the road that goes down to the Sila. His servants, Josabad, son of Shimeath, and Jehozabad, son of Shomer, murdered him. He was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. His son Amaziah replaced him as king. Acts 18, 1 through 22. After this, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to depart from Rome. Paul approached them. And because he worked at the same trade, he stayed with them and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. He addressed both Jews and Greeks in the synagogue every Sabbath, attempting to persuade them. Now when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul became wholly absorbed with proclaiming the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. When they opposed him and reviled him, he protested by shaking out his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am guiltless. From now on I will go to the Gentiles. Then Paul left the synagogue and went to the house of a person named Titius Justus, a Gentile who worshipped God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the president of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians who heard about it believed and were baptized. The Lord said to Paul by a vision in the night, Do not be afraid, but speak and do not be silent, because I am with you, and no one will assault you to harm you, because I have many people in this city. So he stayed there a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Now, while Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews attacked Paul together and brought him before the judgment seat, saying, This man is persuading people to worship God in a way contrary to the law. But just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, If it were a matter of some crime or serious piece of villainy, I would have been justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews, but since it concerns points of disagreement about words and names and your own law, settle it yourselves. I will not be a judge of these things. Then he had them forced away from the judgment seat. So they all seized Sosthenes, the president of the synagogue, and began to beat him in front of the judgment seat. Yet none of these things were of any concern to Gallio. Paul, after staying many more days in Corinth, said farewell to the brothers and sailed away to Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. He had his hair cut off at Contrea, because he had made a vow. When they reached Ephesus, Paul left Priscilla and Aquila behind there, but he himself went into the synagogue and addressed the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he would not consent, but said farewell to them and added, I will come back to you again if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus, and when he arrived at Caesarea, he went up and greeted the church at Jerusalem, and then went down to Antioch. Psalm 
Psalm 145 A Psalm of Praise by David I will extol you, my God, O King. I will praise your name continually. Every day I will praise you. I will praise your name continually. The Lord is great and certainly worthy of praise. No one can fathom his greatness. One generation will praise your deeds to another and tell about your mighty acts. I will focus on your honor and majestic splendor and your amazing deeds. They will proclaim the power of your awesome acts. I will declare your great deeds. They will talk about the fame of your great kindness and sing about your justice. The Lord is merciful and compassionate. He is patient and demonstrates great loyal love. The Lord is good to all and has compassion on all He has made. All your works will give thanks to you, Lord. Your loyal followers will praise you. They will proclaim the splendor of your kingdom. They will tell about your power so that mankind might acknowledge your mighty acts and the majestic splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an eternal kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord supports all who fall and lifts up all who are bent over. Everything looks to you in anticipation, and you provide them with food on a regular basis. You open your hand and fill every living thing with the food it desires. The Lord is just in all His actions and exhibits love in all He does. The Lord is near all who cry out to Him, all who cry out to Him sincerely. He satisfies the desire of His loyal followers. He hears their cry for help and delivers them. The Lord protects all those who love Him, but He destroys all the wicked. My mouth will praise the Lord. Let all who live praise His holy name forever. Proverbs 18, 1 One who has isolated himself seeks his own desires. He rejects all sound judgment. All righty. Okay. So, so this brings us to the end of the reading, and uh, we pray that you receive the blessing from the reading of God's word today. So let's dive in, Pastor Nicholas. Can you give us a summary? What were your initial thoughts on today's reading? I <clears throat> tremendously blessed by this reading in, in, in Kings. The thing that got me is when a new king, just about 70 years old, Josh, yeah, was introduced as king. The priest asked everyone to be loyal to him and to God. Amen. Mm. We are in a situation today where we have to be loyal to something. And the best thing we can do is to be loyal to God. I want to be loyal to God. I, I and, and, and in Paul, in Acts, Paul became wholly absorbed. <laughs> I've never heard this before. Paul became absorbed in preaching the gospel. Amen. And we get to the point where we have to be absorbed. Something has absorbed our, 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 our life. And, and, and for me, honestly, it's preaching the gospel. Right? Amen. I want to, be, to get to the point where preaching God's word is all. Because God is just. God is good and he's near to us in Psalms. God is our deliverer. He is there to bless and to save us. We have to accept him, accept his blessing, accept his call, and he will deliver because he is a good God. Amen. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Uh, it's interesting you mentioned, Josh. That's like my key takeaway as well when I read that story and just that part like you mentioned where they were asking that in order for the people to be loyal to the king 
they needed to be loyal to God as well. So the two go wow. hand in hand. Yeah, that's like that's what struck out to me as well. The exact yeah. same thing you mentioned. <laughs> so that's powerful, and because uh, yes. wow. it was a very specific appeal: be loyal to the king it was, it was. and to God. Because I believe that if we're not able to be loyal to God, then we can't be loyal to man, yes. right? So there has to be that connection, that willingness to obey and to serve God first. And when we do that, then it enables us to get the other things in our life right as well, right? Beautiful. I, I, I just said that as you were talking, man, I felt the Holy Spirit of God moving through my head, man, because loyalty is the key. Mm. Loyalty is the key. Wow. And God's people has to be loyal to him. I, I, I really appreciate it when you're talking about that, that stuff. Yeah. 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 It takes it home, man. It takes it home. No, you're so right, though. And that's a challenge, too, I mean, in our walk. You know, it's, you know, because, like, we're up today, down tomorrow. We go yeah. through these highs and lows and yeah. peaks and valleys. And it's that consistency and that loyalty is what we're striving for. And that's what, when Christ said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added. If we can prioritize God in our life, then a lot of times we find then everything else is works tends to work out. But there are times when we don't, and then everything tends to wobble and we struggle and we wonder why is because we don't have um God centered and prioritizing our life first, right? Yeah, I I, I agree with you. Though. We have to do some more research on what it means to be loyal to God, <laughs> you know, because mm. it is, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about it, we have the ability to be loyal to something. We have the ability as human beings to be yeah. loyal. We have the ability. So and true. if we can turn that ability and be loyal to God specifically, then yep. I, I, I have some cards, some note cards. Mm. It's funny and I, I memorize it. I'm going to put loyalty to God on, 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 on all those cards because mm. it really, really helped me to know where my loyal should stand yeah wow so you said something that, that kind of triggered me like is that as human beings i think we're, we're always loyal to something yeah. yeah um but there are times where we're loyal to ourselves we're loyal <laughs> to a job we're loyal to yeah. something else apart from god so that's why it's like there you constantly find god is calling the children of israel put me first Put me first. Be loyal to me because they are loyal to something, but then where is it directed? And uh, the mistake that they made, and you know, because of the Baal worship and all of that stuff, God was saying, "No, I need to be that in yeah. place of Baal. I need to be." So, what? So the question is, what is Baal in our life today? Yeah. What are we worshiping? What are we putting before God? You know, where does our where does our loyalty lie right now? Right. Wow. Where does our loyalty lies? Pretty yeah. good. This is good stuff. Yeah. Yep. Good. And, and again, we talk about these things, but we have to make it personal. And as yeah. you said, as you yep. said, you just said it. Where does our loyalty lie? And for me, yeah. for me, the question is, where does my loyalty lie? Amen. Who am I yeah. loyal to? Amen. That's so true. Yep. Yeah. And then you also pointed it out like with Paul, how he was on fire for God, his passion, his burden, his mission. He was a man on fire because his loyalty was God's kingdom, God's work. That's first yeah. place in his life. And um, and I also see it being spoken about in the Proverbs as well. And sorry, in the Psalms where David is saying, look at God's goodness. Look at God's yeah. loyalty. Like God is loyal to us. He blesses us. He provides for us. He takes care he of is. us. He does all of these things. Yeah. So it's like you get the, the other aspect of it, right? Where God is showing, I have prioritized you. I've taken care of you. I've blessed you. I'm loyal to you. And then the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the question is asked, are we loyal to God? Wow. Is it, you know? Wow. So and and, 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 and you, you're right, though. Paul, Paul's life was totally absorbed yep. in doing this. He had one yes. mission. Yes. And once he accepted Christ, he had one mission that was to do God's will. Amen. It was absorbed. This thing absorbed who Paul was. Yep. It's not, it wasn't a, a, a sometime thing or one time thing. It That's wasn't right. just a little bit. His whole life man, was yep. absorbed by God. 
Exactly. And that's, again, powerfully now you said that because we, maybe we need to go back and look at the word loyal. What yeah, does it yeah. mean? Because we, we perhaps take it for granted. We think, well, it's a hot today, cold tomorrow type of thing. And, and it's not, like you said, Paul was totally sold out. His entire life was around and the mission of the gospel, right? Amen. That's a challenge yeah. to us to it come is. up higher. Yeah. It and is. um, yeah, I believe that's what God's word is intended to do, is to highlight the deficiencies, the defects, and the and basically what God is calling us to do. It's a challenge. Hey, come up higher. This is this is the example. This is where you need fixing. This is where I'm asking you to address this aspect of your life. And uh, I mean, I'll be the first to put up my hand and say, you know, I've not always been loyal, I've not always prioritized God the we way I not. should. But yeah. that's our that should be our goal. Are we striving yeah. every day to get to that point, right? Yeah. So I, I, you said it earlier on, God is loyal to us. You Amen. said it. I you know, I thought yesterday's lesson was, I mean, just tremendous. Yep. Today's lesson is I mean, Amen. It, it, wow. Yeah. God is just, he he is merciful, he is long suffering, yeah. and yep. all he's asking us. Is to be loyal to him. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know the funny thing, if you're not loyal to God, we are loyal to something else. To something else, yep. Yeah. Or to someone yeah. else. Yep. So. Yep. And a lot of times, I mean, when we to be real, it's like we we put ourselves first. We put our interests first, our wow. our money first, our wow. job, whatever it is that we place before God. That's the bill in our life, right? And um we, we're not in some Altar serving and worshiping a Baal or false god, but there is something else that's at the the throne of our heart, and yeah. that's taking the place of God, and that's that's why we struggle. That's why we we don't have that consistency because we place self before God. And yeah. um, so, Pastor, I will we'll ask that you have the last word, and um, just to close it out, what are your your last thoughts on on today's lesson? The Spirit of God, how the Spirit of God works. For us to have this lesson this morning, it has to be from God. It Amen. has to be His Spirit leading us and for us to be loyal and let God's work absorb. It takes over our life. I, 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 getting to that point is another story. But, <laughs> but yeah. we have to be loyal to God and, and we have to find ways where we are loyal to him and to him only. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Wonderful. You know, that's a powerful point. And it's so, uh, sorry, I, don't, I, I really want you to have the last word, but I was just thinking of what you said. And it's like, it's how the Holy Spirit brings out something very simple. Yeah. You know, and there's just like one specific point, loyalty. You know what I mean? And like, it kind of just, our whole conversation this morning and I, I'm blown away by that because it's like, it's not complicated. It's not this, you know, crazy <laughs> things that no one can understand. Yeah. It's a, a yeah. simple theme, a simple concept that everyone can understand. And God is saying to you and to me this morning and to our listeners, does this resonate? Does this apply to you? And if it does, you know, come up higher, pray about it, seek me for help because I'm here, right? And um, so, Pastor, yeah, so please close us out with uh, the last thoughts and the last words and also the, the final prayer. And I, and I think it's fitting if if you don't mind that we can also pray about loyalty. So the person watching this who's struggling with that loyalty, who's struggling with a bail worship in their life, not a physical God in an altar, but something they place before God, um, they can re receive some help and power from the Holy Spirit to overcome those issues. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think I can forget it this morning. I don't think I can forget it. And you're right, though, you said it. A simple thing as we don't talk about it no more. We don't even talk exactly. about being loyal to God. I've so, I've never heard somebody talk about being loyal to God. So true, and so this true. morning, the Spirit of God brings it clear to us yep. that we have to be loyal to Him. We have to be loyal to God mm. and, and and let and let Jesus Christ absorb our let the Holy Spirit absorb our life. And somebody need to be loyal to Him, and that person is me. Amen. I have to be loyal to God and let His work absorb my life so let's bow our eyes of prayer amen <clears throat> dear lord we thank you for this morning we thank you for your spirit which led and direct us to be loyal to you in all shape form help us be loyal lord 
give you our whole heart. There's someone who is struggling with loyalty, with loyalty. I'm asking you through your grace and through your mercy, bless that person who hasn't to realize that they have to be loyal to you always. Forgive us how we have sinned. Forgive us how we have come short. But above all, Lord, bless us and give us the strength and the courage to absorb, our, to let you absorb our life and to be loyal to you in all things. Thank you. And we bless your name. Amen. 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 So we thank <clears throat> Pastor Nicholas. Thank you so much for that closing prayer. And friends, we pray that you were blessed by today's message. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I was definitely ministered to, and I believe God wants to do the same thing in your life and my life where he wants to speak to us and remind us and show us Hey, this is where you need to come apart. And this is where you need to address and pray about and seek me for strength. So we hope that you also were blessed by this message. And if you have been, please let us know what your thoughts are. Share your comments in the description box right below this video. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with someone else who may need to hear this message. And right after this video, we're going to play a short video. We're going to place a short video about summarizing acts of kindness mission and especially the goal of the of the ministry right now, which is to complete two churches in Ghana. And this project is actually underway right now. And we'll share this video in terms of how you can help this ministry accomplish this goal, because the goal of Acts of Kindness is to share the gospel in all the world, primarily by focusing on meeting the physical needs of people through food, clothing, and shelter, right? Acts of Kindness, thereby opening the way where men and women can receive the gospel. So again, we thank Pastor Franklin Nicholas for being with us today. Also, we thank him for being used by God and uh, sharing his vision of Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry. So stay tuned. Right after this video, you'll see a short clip where we, sh we share what's happening right now in Ghana with the building of two churches. And we thank you, friends, for being here. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. So please join us for another episode of My Daily Manor with Acts of Kindness Mission Ministry. Take care. God bless you. And bye for now.